Welcome to this video tutorial for DT Register. Uh, in this video we will be looking at conditional fields. Uh, this is one feature that is unique to DT Register. Um, the first extension really to offer this kind of thing for Joomla event registration and uh, definitely the one to do it most effectively. Uh, what uh, the version as of the time of this video is 2.7.14 uh, that's the version that we are using here in this video uh, and also in Joomla 2.5 uh, as a note uh, to you the conditional fields feature uh, that you'll see here in this video uh, the way it functions and the way it's set up is done the same and whether you're in Joomla 2.5 or still in 1.5 or anywhere in between uh, so this video will help you either way. Alright, so uh, first of all, let's take a look at on the front end of a registration. If I go to register for an event, and this is just some uh, demo registration setup, of course. First, I'm going to show you how conditional fields can work, and then I'll show you how they're set up. Uh, conditional fields essentially allow you uh, to have even more control over your fields where a field only shows up and functions on your event if you have enabled it uh, and also if the correct selection has been made in another field. A selection field can be a drop down, a radio button, or a checkbox and you can assign conditional fields to any of those three selection types your conditional field can be any field type. Uh, Alright, so here in this event you can see I have a uh, selection field set up here for a registration type. This is a field I've created given the user the choice of adult, student, or child. Now if I hit adult you see that I have another field that popped up here marriage status uh, giving another selection um, and then of course you can see here based on what I select here the price changes uh, that's that type of functionality is covered in uh, another video but uh, just showing that you can also have the price variations happen on a conditional field and as you can have multiple levels of conditional fields it gives you a huge amount of control for pricing your event in multiple ways for various uh, pricing options that your users can have uh, as well as selling additional products or whatever it is you can do just about anything um, so here you can see this field that shows up for an adult now if I change this to student you can see now my field changed now I have a drop down saying what university do you attend so since I'm a student I want to find out what university the user is attending a price of course is still changing based upon my other selection uh, but that field changed based on the adult or student option so that is an example of of a conditional field in action now let's see how those are set up if I go into the fields management area first of all let's take a quick look at my registration type field this is where I have my adult, student, or child selection. And uh, so that selection is already set up. You see I have some pricing options in there. Uh, then that's just set up like a normal radio button field. Now for the conditional, if I go to, where is it at here? Here it is, the married status, which is uh, one of that we saw a minute ago. If I open this up, uh, you'll see this is also set up just like a regular uh, radio button field. I got my three values here, my selection limits. I have some fees associated there, which is optional. And then if I scroll down a little bit, you can see conditional options. Right here, I can say this field is only going to show up based upon the reg type field. And so in this drop down I will see a list of all selection fields that I have created uh, just regular text fields or date fields things like that are not going to show here uh, only selection fields 
So in this case, I have the reg type field. Um, so I see my three options. You can see here there are check boxes, whereas on the form there are radio buttons. Right here in this admin area, they will always show us check boxes. That is because it functions as a uh, as a or, uh, uh, meaning uh, here you can say I have it set as adult. So if the user chooses adult in this field, that is going to activate this married status field. Um, I could hit uh, both of these boxes here, and what this would do, this would say if the user chooses adult or student, then uh, this field will be activated. So you can check multiple options, and then this field will be activated if any of the selected values are chosen by the user. There's one additional step here to the uh, conditional options. Uh, you have minimum group size and maximum group size. Uh, this allows you to make it conditional even further depending on the size of a group registration. Uh, by default, both of these numbers will say zero, meaning it's not going to have any additional effect. But what I could do is I could say uh, three and seven as an example. What this would say is in a group registration this field is only going to be activated if the group is at least three but not more than seven as far as the number of members in the group. Uh, so that gives you even more control to be able to say uh, specifically what uh, registrants are going to see this field. So you can uh, set this as needed and save it. I'm just going to close so I don't save any of my changes there. Uh, and then, uh, so now we have that field and of course we have the student, the university field uh, that we also saw on the form which is conditional um, on uh, if the user picks student on the reg type. So you can see that's set up the same way. Now one other thing to point out here, once you have your fields created of course within an event you enable which fields you're going to use. So I just want to point out one thing. Let's go to this event that we were just looking at. And if I go to the fields tab I will see a list of fields here and be able to activate or deactivate those fields for this event. Now what you're going to notice here's you can see the reg type field that's set to be used by as you know whatever default settings are for that field but you will not see the married status or the university selection. Uh, those conditional fields that we were just looking at they do not show up on this list that is on purpose. Uh, just to help keep this list a little cleaner and not get so bogged down if you activate the parent field for the event, the conditional fields are automatically activated. You do not have to activate them each uh, separately. Activate the parent, conditional fields are activated, and as far as if those fields are required or how they work in a group registration, uh, that will function according to whatever you set as the default settings for those conditional fields uh, within the, the setup of that field itself. Uh, so you still have that kind of control um, for the conditional fields. So uh, that should explain to you how you can set up conditional fields for your event. Uh, it does give you quite a bit of flexibility and you can do just about anything with it. Um, again, affecting pricing and so forth. If you have further questions, uh, you can let us know. Um, hopefully that'll get you on track there. Thanks a lot.